just been doing the local circuits, uh, do local small kind of tours, and trying to get our name out there, doing a lot of promotion. But it's it's going well. It's uh, it's finally getting there. Very good. So, how's the music scene where you guys are at? Is there a lot of is there a lot of places to play? There are a lot of places to play, but there are a lot of them have shut down or haven't got the reputation they once had, and they haven't got they don't seem to have the power to pull a really big crowd. So we we're finding the Birmingham metal scene has died a lot over the last couple of years. It's not what it was. So, I mean, next year, hopefully, we might move a bit further afield and see what's out there for us. But, I mean, the, we're, in, we're in the days of the internet now. It's, it's a new era. So, I mean, the internet's the biggest promotional tool we've got. I mean, I'm able to sit here and talk to somebody like yourself, who's however many miles away, and still, got, still get ourselves heard and all, what we're doing heard, so... I know the internet has definitely changed the way everything in the music industry works. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And yeah, I mean it's awesome to me to be able, you know, here I am in the states, you're over and you're in Britain, right? Yeah, yeah, it's snowing at the minute. It's snowing. And yeah. uh, you know, later today I'm going to talk to a band in Turkey. So, how crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're jumping all over the world. So, um, so what do you guys got going on right now? What's what's on the horizon? Well, this year's this year's a year to look to the future for us. We're working on the album. That's our main focus at the minute. Is trying to get every track in the album finished. Hopefully, all being well, fingers crossed, we might get the majority of the album recorded towards the end of the year. We were hoping for possibly getting the album out next year, but we're one of those bands. We don't like to rush anything just to get something out there. We'd rather spend three years doing something and have the end product exactly as we want it, perfect, and everyone's happy with it. We spend a lot of time writing and developing ideas. I mean, it comes into that kind of progressive element of the band. Um, it, it really does take that time to develop and gel everything together. Very cool. So what... well, We have got some big news. Sorry to interrupt. No, go for it. Carry on, sir. No, go for it. I was going to say, we have got some pretty big news coming up for us anyway. In the next, hopefully in the next month, by the end of the month, we should have some, some big news which will really affect the sound of the album and our live set from now on because it's, it, it's going to have a massive influence on our, our live sound and the, the album and just the, the way our sound develops. It's really going really to make a big change, but I can't say any more than that other than the fact that there is news coming. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing that. So what, um, how, no, let me back up. How'd the band start? How'd you, what, what made this whole, this all, all this happen for you guys? Um, I didn't thank Dan for that. Um, he was in um, a band a few years ago. We've all done bands for years. I think since we were about 15, we've jumped from band to band to band. Um, Dan started this band with the hope of having a fresh start and almost creating a band that wasn't just friend based because I think a lot of us has had that experience where we'd been in bands with people we were ridiculously close with before and you haven't got this room to breathe and be very critical with the person when they've been your best friend for five years. So Dan created this band, got Johnny on board. They both got Matt in, they both found Dave, and then eventually through Matt they found me. And over the last year and a half, we've all grown really close, and we are like a tight-knit family unit, but we've still got this kind of creative freedom with each other where we can tell each other if we don't like an idea. And we can really push the boundaries and together come up with something that we feel is quite original and it's our own. Nice. And then, so when you guys are writing music, what's your creative process for that? Is there like one person that kind of leads that on, or do you, is it more collaborative? How do you guys do that? It's going to change, I think. It's already started to. When it first started, Dan, have you heard of Guitar Pro? Have you got Guitar Pro in sets? What's that? It, Guitar Pro, it's a computer program. Uh, you can basically tab out music on there, and it gives you a MIDI playback of okay. every track. Okay. Um, and that was the initial kind of writing style was that everything was pre-formulated and Dan would sit down and write ideas or Johnny would jam through riffs and they'd be then put onto a computer 
passed around everyone. If anyone got any, any input, it would uh, kind of develop develop off the back of that. But Dan is the main creative brain at the moment. At the minute, however, we're trying to really get the studio vibe on the go. Um, and I think this year is going to be the year with everything that's already recorded, there are going to be some big changes too. And they're going to be on the album as well, but almost this, this rebirth of all the current tracks will be on the album. But anything new is just going to be a complete kind of free jam style development that, that really gives us something new that we haven't had before. Okay, so these tracks I have right now that I've been playing, where did you guys record those at? Well, again, it all comes back to Dan. He's he's the man, he's the rock at the centre of the band. Without him, I don't think we'd be able to do anything, to be honest. He, he's actually a, a recording, uh, record, recording artist. He's a, recording artist. Uh, he's a sound engineer, sorry, himself. He works at a recording studio in Birmingham. So we've got that ability to record in our practice room because we've got our own sort of warehouse lock-up unit that we can just jam in and use when we want. We recorded the guitars in there for the EP. The vocals we recorded in the studio in Birmingham. But Emperors, I don't know if you've got Airs and Emperors as well, the two track singles we did. I have like three th I have like three tracks is all. Oh, we'll have to get some more over to you. There are a couple more tracks that we did afterwards as well, which we, you can get off our website and you can listen to online. Um, they were recorded solely in the studio by Dan. So we've got that, that benefit as well where because he's one of the main creative brains in the band, musically, he knows before he gets in the studio how he wants things to sound. And because he's the one pushing the buttons, he's got the ability to make it sound just as he wanted to sound. He does a brilliant job for us. Excellent. That, that's, that's a nice... Um, it's nice to have that in the band. I mean, that definitely helps. It saves you a lot of money, too. Yeah, we're very self-contained, to be honest. Uh, the uh, EP and single... We recorded everything ourselves, mixed and mastered it ourselves, produced the artwork, got the uh, photographer and the designer in. The artwork was done all ourselves. It, we, we haven't really relied on anyone else. We've we've saved as much money, well, not as much money as we can, because we still have to put money into it. But we've, we've, we're very self-contained, and I think we've all got the opinion of the more we can do for ourselves, the better we'll end up in the end. Right? Yeah. Because then you don't lose that creative. You don't you don't lose the creative process to someone else. Yeah. What um, what got you into music? What uh, what what you said you started at around fifteen? What you know? What uh, what was that force that was like, man? I wanna I wanna do music. Um, I think everyone's got their individual kind of influence that really kickstarted them. For me, getting into metal was Slipknot. It was the early kind of appearance of Slipknot and that kind of raw energy live and that attitude towards music that made me wanna being abandoned want to do that kind of thing cool so you know this next question i mean i just actually before you before we talked i actually was sitting here listening to your tracks and just getting back in the groove and seeing how kick-ass they are and cheers man. but what um what what tell you tell tell the listeners tell me what makes you guys stand out what do you guys how are you guys different from the other ten thousand bands out there Oh, that's a hard question. Um, without sounding, without trying to sound too arrogant, I think it's it's the fact that we do have a genuine blend of styles that have kind of, and it's this genuine blend of tastes. I've met a lot of metal bands whose sole focus is metal. They are metal born and bred. That is, I think musically we've got some some deeper influences. I mean, uh, Dan. He doesn't bother writing. Peter Gabriel, he's a massive Peter Gabriel fan. For me, prog bands like Tool, Perfect Circle, anything to be honest that Maynard touches, I fall in love with instantly. Um, Johnny's more of like your classic rock, your Metallica kind of stuff, your Alter Bridge, which is where that big pale voice comes from. And Matt, again, is into everything. We've all got this kind of collective style and this kind of collective understanding that the time signatures that we're playing kind of give it this this different energy and sometimes it's a little bit awkward to follow I mean even for us when we first start playing it but we still kind of try and keep this solid groove and personally vocally for me as well with lyrics I don't like I mean I've got nothing against the guys who do it but metal for metal sake is something that I personally I don't do if I can't do lyrics about 
hate and death and corpses and just that kind of over the top aggressive nature. <laughs> it, all the vocals to me are something that have meaning. They've all got a story, even if it's not apparent. I'm hoping that someone can look, look at the vocals, the lyrics, take something away and kind of create their own meaning from it because they all actually have and they have quite a powerful story within them. There's nothing that's just put there for the sake of putting it there. It's all quite calculated. So, do you have any kind of message you're trying to throw out there with your with you guys' lyrics, or is it just you know whatever you're thinking at the time? It's whatever we're thinking at the time. I think it's just it's a voice to kind of release those thoughts and those ideas. There's some philosophical stuff in there as well. Um, there's some emotional stuff. There's the stuff that's I mean. The stuff that's just kind of, there's one song in particular that's just kind of uh, seeing injustice and that kind of attitude of injustice and it was a personal thing for me. I was driving down the street and saw some guys throwing things at people out of the car and it was just very enraging and it, it just kind of drove me to, it's quite an aggressive song but it's aggressive at the right, the right kind of people. It's not aggressive for the sake of being aggressive, it's aggressive for people who haven't got that level of understanding of other people. How did you guys name the band Collision Process? Where'd that come from? Uh, it was literally throw shit to see what sticks, to be honest. It was uh, a whiteboard. We've got a whiteboard in the and print words, just single words, went down on the wall. And it was just literally drawing a line between them until there was actually something that really worked well because we didn't want something that was one word we didn't want something that was too long we've had different um we've had different people come up with different meanings for the name as well because a lot of, it's quite open to interpretation just that kind of process of collision within the music and the the different things that are happening at the same time that kind of collide in a process to develop and make a whole and there are a lot of different people who come up with a lot of different explanations that we haven't had to and we quite like that i think that People can interpret the name however they want when they've seen the music. I don't think the name matters that much to us. It's just it stuck, and it's something that we've always been we've always been happy with. And everyone else did. We had fun. Something. Okay, cool, man. I I I always enjoy asking that question because you just never know what uh, sometimes it turns into this crazy twenty-minute story. So. No, I'll keep that one short. <laughs> Do you have a favorite song to perform live from the from the stuff you have right now? Um, I think for me personally, it's actually one you won't have heard yet. It's one that's going to be on the album. It's a track called "Be the Machine," and I think it's because it's the newest track that we've actually added into the set, and it's got a very very groovy element to it, um, and it's just got this really nice nice rhythm you can really get into and I just love I love the melodies in the song as well it's just it really does excite me apart from that the stuff you've got at the minute the EP stuff and what's released Revelations and Divide because we always we usually close on Divide and energy to it to close on um, it, it, it's a lot of fun to play so what do you guys do when you're not when you're not uh jamming and practicing and all this stuff what do you guys like to do to like chill out oh um we're all we're all kind of at different points in life in that kind of aspect matt johnny and dan based in the music industry i mean matt and uh, johnny are both music teachers that's what they teach for a living um matt actually works for yamaha teaching guitar and johnny's a school teacher teaches all around music. So Dan's a sound engineer, and Dan does a lot of session bass work as well, and is in with uh, does a lot of other bands. Um, he's other he's other band, which is kind of an international thing, which is all based on the internet. It's just sending tracks across. His value of milk. They've got quite a bit of exposure really, exposure recently, and they he's, he's, his time he's kind of taken up with music. He's what he loves his music. Um, for me personally, I'm a magician as well. So. That keeps me plenty up, plenty occupied. It sounds like you guys all live and breathe it, man. That's cool. Yeah. So what um, 
Anything else that you would like to tell the listeners? Anything else that we haven't talked about? Just th- this is like your free for all time now. As I say, I just want to reiterate the fact we have got some need to speak to us anyway. Some big news coming up in hopefully the next month. We should see a change to a lot of stuff, um, including the live sound. The album sound. We should have some videos, of hopefully, with kind of examples of this new live sound. We're also working on the little bits that bands don't have. Bands at our level, kind of getting to doing later, which is that between set set times where you're jumping from one song to another, and there's that period where you really need to keep that energy going. We're working on something special as well for that. This for us is the year, or the next two years are going to be the serious look ahead to the future um, times where we're really in that progressive state trying to make something more of ourselves be able to play next year as well. So hopefully the name will be out there a lot more. Um, We just hope people like what we do because we genuinely love it. Very cool. Well, I wish you all the luck and success in that. I hope everything works out well. No problems. Yeah, cheers for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. You know, one other thing I forgot to ask you. How often do you guys, um, how often are you guys able to get together and practice? Do you guys have have much time to do that? Yeah, once a week. Every, every week, once a week. As I say, again, we're blessed with Dan because he's actually got a warehouse the room that we've kind of custom built to be a practice studio so the gear lives in there it's pre-set up we've bought our we've chipped in bought our own PA system so we're just wondering our own leisure everything's already set up and good to go and we just jam and practice to our heart's content very cool it gives us this freedom to move around we're not watching a clock because we're not paying for a practice room it's, it's, it's just a nice free environment Okay, radio tag time. So, if you can make one that says, you know, this is Adam from Collision Process, and you're listening to DJ Rem at metalheadradio.com. That was. You ready? You betcha. Hi, guys, this is Adam from Collision Process. You're listening to DJ Rem on Metalhead Radio. Very cool. And then if you can make one more... That'd be a generic uh, station tag for the for for all the DJs that I'll send to them. Yeah, no problems. All right, guys, this is Adam from Collision Process. You're listening to MetalHeadRadio.com. Very cool, man. Appreciate it. That one I'll send off to everybody along with the tunes. So. No problems. So yeah, so if you, that, if you any other tracks you can send me would would be greatly appreciated because what I'll do is after I play the interview back I'll all the tracks I have from you I will play after the interview no problems that's great stuff cheers for having us man so no thank you I appreciate it and uh like I said you know this was a this was this has been one of them interviews that it take, took us a while to to hook up and I'm glad we finally did so yeah no I mean it's uh it, it's it's definitely worth it I'm glad we've we've sorted it in the end I'll say it's just a shame we we all couldn't have been here but with the with the kind of time difference, it's a little bit awkward to set anything up that's great for everyone. So, and I'm just, I'm just happy we finally managed to sort it and uh, finally got a, a voice on Metalhead Radio. Exactly. Yeah, and um, make sure you tell the rest of the guys I said hello, and um, just you know let them know that Metalhead Radio loves you guys. So we'll be playing the crap out of you. Oh, cheers, man. We love you too. Okay, dude. Thanks again. I'll talk no, to you later. Sir. Cheers, dude. See you later. Yep.